Are you spending lots of money on very fancy lenses when a much cheaper lens will do just as well? Hello everybody once again and thank you once again for checking in. Well, I'd like to ask a question today. Are you spending lots of money on very fancy lenses when a much cheaper lens will do just as well? Well, today we're going to find out. I've got five lenses with me today, or is it four? I've got a number of lenses, I'll tell you what they are. On the Sony A7, I have here the Olympus 55mm f1.2, a little bit crazy wide open but very very nice stop down, famous for its abilities from f2 and there onwards, highly regarded as a very 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 nice lens. We've also got, let me have a look in my bag here, what we've got, oh we've got the Carl Zeiss Jena 50mm f1.8, another very, very highly regarded lens, uh, still my gold standard for 50mm lenses, I've not found one to beat it uh, in overall performance. And then we've got a couple of cheapies. What cheapies have we got? We've got a cheapie that pretty much anyone can find anywhere, a very, very common lens. We've got the 55 millimeter Pentax F2 and that's here that's a very very common cheap lens you can pick those up for 30 40 quid all day long and then we've also got as our wild card we've got look they're all wrapped up in tissue that's professional isn't it that's what you get on this show ladies and gents you get a dose of professionalism in every frame. We've also got with us the Miranda 50mm f2. Now this is a lens I picked up recently and I was quite pleased and surprised by the performance. So when I said five lenses, I think I was lying. I think I've actually only got four lenses. Yes, so we've got those four. So we've got two very fancy ones. We've got the Olympus. 55mm 1.2, we've got the Caesar J. Carl Zeiss Jena 50mm f1.8, we've got the Pentax 55mm f2 and we've got the Miranda 50mm f2 and I'm going to shoot the same shot with all of them and then we're going to go back to Xenography headquarters, I'm going to check them out and I'm going to let you compare them and when you've decided what you think are the nicest and whether you can pick the fancy lenses from the cheap lenses I will then reveal which is the cheap lens hair in my mouth and which is the fancy lens as usual I've made my uh, I've made an error I needed uh, to bring a tripod that was about three feet tall or thereabouts and I've actually brought a tripod That is about three inches tall. All right, that was the first shot with the Olympus. I don't know that you need to see all this. I'm gonna shoot them. It's gonna be very boring to watch. I'm just gonna shoot them now, one after the other. So here we go. So, ladies and gentlemen, fellow xenographers, we find ourselves back at xenography headquarters and somebody's uh, seems to put dinosaurs on the wall while I was away and uh, I've got to admit I kind of like it actually and uh, I've still got my hat on I've just noticed I'll take it off although I don't know why stop now just when I'm enjoying it that's what I always say so let's check out the images I found it very very difficult to put hair between them I'm going to call them lenses one two three and four I know what they are of course but see what you think. It's not the most scientific test in the world, but it does give some results, which I thought were quite interesting. So here we go, let's have a look at them. I'll check them out on here. 
So this is lens number, what number is this? This is lens number one. So there's the image from lens number one. And you can see that there's plenty of sharpness there. You can see that there's some good contrast. Uh, and you can see that the detail in that fence post has been picked up very well. It's uh, a very sharp image. I shut all these lenses down to f2.8, so they're all at f2.8. So that is lens number one. Here's lens number two. Lens number two looks pretty sharp to me as well, especially on the left hand side of that post there. Lens number two does look pretty sharp at that point. Um, I don't suppose that I've found exactly the same focus point on each uh, image. What I was aiming for, if you look at the right hand side of the post, you'll see two little holes around about the center of the image. And that's where I was aiming to focus on. I may have got the focus slightly out between various images. Lens number three, there's, there's the image from lens number three. And to be honest, again, it's a sharp image. There's plenty of contrast. There's plenty of detail. Um, you can see lots and lots of tiny features there on that fence post. So again, I can't really see too much difference between any of these lenses so far. Let's have a look at lens number four, see what that can give us. Well, there again, lens number four is sharp, lots of detail, lots of contrast. I wonder if lens number four is a little bit nicer than the others. I wonder if it's just that little bit sharper than the others. But if it is, it's only by, you know, that much. I suppose that's important, I guess, if uh, if you're looking for, for, for the sharpest possible lens, that's going to be quite an important uh, thing. But if there is a difference, it's only marginal, which uh, is quite surprising. Let's have a look at the other images that I shot. So again, lens number one. Well, this time the focus was on the stalks of grass in the near foreground there. And you'll see that on lens number one, we've got some very sharp uh, stalks of grass there. No chromatic aberration that I can see, no lateral fringing. Lens number two, slightly less or rather less contrast but we've still got some nice sharp uh, blades of grass in focus there. Again, the point of focus is going to be different. If there is a difference, I don't think it's that great, but what do you think? Here's lens number three. Again, looking at the grass blades and I can see some nice sharpness there. I've forgotten what lens number three is. Oh, oh yes. All right. So there's lens number three, nice and sharp. Possibly not quite as sharp as the other two. I don't know. But again, only a hair's breadth in it. And there is lens number four. So actually, I've got to admit, I think I've slightly missed focus on some of the blades of grass in lens number four. But you can see if you look on the lower right corner of the image, especially on the right hand side of the image, you'll see that there are some very sharp blades of grass in focus there. Let's go to the long shot that I took. Again, not a great deal of difference. Um, there's the long shot with lens number one. Things seem to be nicely in focus. I can see all the windmills and the power pylons in the background there. Lens number two. Well, we do seem to have lost 
the pylons, but the houses and the buildings are in nice sharp focus. I don't see any problem with the sharpness there. Lens number three. I think lens number three is a little bit softer in this shot, I've got to admit. Yeah, I, I really think that one is a, just a little bit softer. See what you think. Maybe you don't agree. I don't know. Check it out closely. Zoom in, pause, whatever you like. Um, but I think, I think that one is just that little bit softer. And there we are, lens number four again. And that is the long shot from lens number four. So what do you think is the nicest image? So we've got four lenses, two rather fancy ones, one sort of middling one and one very, very cheap one. Which one gave the nicest images and which lens was which? Should we look at the images again? Okay, here we go. So, are you ready for the big reveal? Okay, I'm going to tell you which lens was which now. Lens number one is the Carl Zeiss Jena, my favourite 50mm lens. Lens number two is the Pentax here. This very humble Pentax, available from around about 40 quid-ish. Lens number three is the Miranda, which I was lucky enough to pick up for a tenner. And lens number four was the Olympus F1.2 55mm. So, what do you think? Did you get it right? Did you get it right? Did you separate the cheapies from the more expensives? Well, if you did, well done, because I really don't think that was an easy task at all those lenses seemed to give let me get a better position those lenses whoop, all seem to give very similar results now <clears throat> clearly clearly a lens like the olympus here for example can do things that this humble little miranda can't this olympus is a just an astonishing art lens if you want a kooky background it'll open up to f1.2 and give you the kookiest background you can imagine it's a sort of a rival to the helios 40 for kookiness it's it's very very soft wide open it's you know considered not a good lens in many olympus circles because of that but my gosh there is nothing like and i, I mean literally <laughs> there is nothing like it isn't it always the way someone phones when you're trying to make a flipping video? Anyway, yeah, as I was saying, there is nothing like this Olympus lens and it will do stuff that this little Miranda can't. And it will do stuff that this little Pentax over here just can't do. But in day-to-day -day photography, I don't think there's really much in it. Similarly, this CZJ over here, this Carl Zeiss Jena. Let me put this camera down. This Carl Zeiss Jena is literally my gold standard for 50 millimeter lenses. I just haven't found one better, um, you know, when you consider all the characteristics of color and sharpness and, and uh, and so on. It's very, very sharp lens. It gives absolutely fantastic colour and it just has a very, very, very special quality that, I don't know, it's got the X quality that other lenses just don't have, or at least none that I've found so far. However, in day-to-day -day photography, it's not too much different to the Miranda. 
So there we are. What have we learned today? Well, I'm not really sure. No, I am really sure, actually. I am sure what we've learned today. I've learned something doing this test. What I've learned doing this test is that in day-to-day -day photography, it doesn't really matter what lens you have. Just get any lens and go out and shoot. Your lens is not important. Your gear is not important. A tiny little bit of sharpness, one way or the other, isn't important. If you want to do photography, grab yourself a cheap lens, grab yourself a cheap camera and get out and shoot. OK, so I guess that is about it from me for today. Oh, before I forget, before I forget, this is really important. Big shout out to Saira and Miami. I hope you're doing well. Shout out to you. Thank you very, very much to all the subscribers. That's a heartfelt thanks. Thanks for all your subscriptions. Thanks for your support. It means a lot if you've liked and enjoyed this episode. Chuck us a sub, please. All it takes is a little click of the button. That would make me happy. Many, many, many thanks go also to patrons. Thank you. Thank you for your patronage. Without it, we couldn't do what we do on this channel. I've said that once I've said it many times, but it's absolutely true. Thank you very much for your continued support. So until next time, I guess that's it from me. So enjoy your photography, enjoy your shooting and enjoy everything else while you're at it. That's it from me for now. Cheerio all.